In this video, I'll talk about the considerations you should make when choosing a screen resolution. Not entirely a new concept. I've talked about this before when talking about doing needs analysis and considering uh, whether responsive design should be a part of your e-learning design. Uh, responsive design is great, especially if you're working for an organization where a, a large percentage of the population of that organization are using mobile devices and, and using different screen resolutions and so on. Um, certainly, if an organization is using modern equipment, you should be designing for HTML5. But of course, a lot of people make the mistake and assume that HTML5 is responsive design and the two are interchangeable. They're not. HTML5 can still be a fixed aspect ratio. So, uh, and I suggest that for the vast majority of projects that you're designing, uh, it still may be smart to do a standard project. You sure, certainly as a, uh, as a, an e-learning developer, you should be versed in both design techniques, um, but I would suggest that you know a, a large percentage of your clients will uh, will still require standard projects for a long time to come. Um, as the bring your own device uh, trend in workplaces increases, that will change, of course. But for right now, most people are sitting in front of a desktop computer and uh, taking your e-learning using using that methodology. But um, there are some things that you need to consider when considering screen resolution. Uh, if you are looking at uh, the, the workplace computers that users will typically be taking your training on or taking your e-learning courses on, uh, there are certain things that you should look for. Find out what the minimum resolution is. You know, what, what uh, you know, partner with the IT department and find out whether the, um, the folks that will be taking your training are looking at it on monitors capable of 1024 by 768 or have most people switched over to 1366 by 768. You know, that's going to make a big difference and uh, certainly affect the amount of screen real estate that you have access to. I found actually a really useful tool. It's a website actually called how big is my browser? And this is a really great tool. As you can see here, it simply displays, regardless of uh, what setting you put your your uh, your browser to, whether it's full screen and taking up the full width of the of the uh, the computer monitor, it's going to give you the resolution, but not the resolution of the monitor, but all of this yellow space that you see here. And of course, they've got rulers down the uh, left-hand side and across the top to give you an idea of what that resolution is at different points. Uh, if, for example, you don't want people to run your e-learning courses full screen, maybe you can just arbitrarily select a screen size that might be appropriate and then design your training with these numbers in mind. Now, you might be thinking, well, this is only applicable to standard projects. But keep in mind that, uh, you know, even with responsive design, there are some choices that you can make. Like, for example, on this responsive design course, I've changed the, the breakpoints to be different values. I've actually gone to the minimum values that you can set them for. But you could just as easily change these to maximize them as well. So for desktop, you can go as high as 1280. And then, of course, increase the width of all of the uh, all of the different breakpoints accordingly. Uh, obviously, the larger you go, the more opportunity to put content on that screen is there. Uh, but keep in mind that, of course, if your uh, if your audience is using a lot of smaller devices, that might not be ideal for all situations. And don't forget that you have the device height as well. And that's usually indicated uh, with this yellow bar that goes around the window here. But you can manually change that here. And incidentally, you can break the uh, or unlink from the device height a specific slide height. So you can set the height of, a, of just one slide 
let's say you have a slide where there's a whole mess of content and you're okay with people scrolling up and down on that page, you can actually set a slide height separate from the device height. So there's a lot of considerations to, to make here. And uh, you know, certainly there are tools that are available. Interestingly enough, you can see that different browsers respond differently to how much screen real estate you can actually afford. So here's Chrome without any additional toolbars or anything like that. I'm getting 1920 by 1019. That's pretty big. Let's take a look at the classic Internet Explorer under the same conditions. In fact, 1920 by 1024, I actually get more space with uh, classic Internet Explorer. And if you've got a very corporate environment with a default Windows install, it's very likely that they're running some version of Internet Explorer. Uh, Windows 10 users will now also have the Edge browser and uh, it, it gives you a little bit less. It takes up a little bit more space up top here. 1920 by 1003. Now that's based on this particular monitor size. If users within a certain organization are using smaller monitors, uh, then this number is going to change, obviously. So that's something that's uh, important to note. I want to also give a, a shout out to Anita Horsley. Uh, she was able to, uh, through a session that I attended of hers, share with me uh, a way of actually doing some interesting things within Chrome. Um, you know, if you are, let's say, previewing your course that's been published, I should emphasize that this is a published course. I've published it to a folder on my computer. Here's my course. It's just a, a demo course I'm working on right now. And if I right click on here and select inspect, alternatively, there's a developer option from the hamburger menu that you can bring up as, as well. This will bring you into um, this developer page where I can see a lot of information about things like background colors, displays, heights, opacity, stuff like that. All this HTML related stuff over here. But what's great is along the top here, I have some controls that allow me to preview my course under different circumstances in specifically with responsive design in mind. So for example, I can select what this course would look like if I was previewing it on an iPad mini. I can also rotate the virtual device and see what it would look like in landscape mode as well. So a really great uh, preview tool if you want to see what your course would look like within the Chrome browser and under these different circumstances. So uh, definitely recommend that if you're not using Chrome, you should probably install it and get these added features. Hopefully this video has helped you guys out. If you guys think the videos that I'm producing for you are of good value, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this particular video was uh, pretty good, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.